Okay, this lesson is all about the law of sines. Um, and we introduced you guys to the law of sines and, and then later the law of cosines. Sorry, this is the law of cosines. We introduced you to both of them because we eventually have to deal with oblique triangles. And oblique triangles are just triangles that have no right angle. Now, if you had a right angle, then you could rely on your Sokotoa knowledge, um, sine, cosine, tangent, and you could solve a triangle, you could find sides, you could find angles. Um, these are triangles that don't have a 90. And so if they don't have a 90, you cannot use Sokotoa. You cannot use sine, cosine, and tangent the way that you've learned them, meaning that sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse and so on. So those only work in a right triangle. Law of cosines, although you're still using cosine in essence, it's not using it in terms of the adjacent and the hypotenuse of the triangle. No hypotenuse, we don't have a 90. Um, it's just, it's a longer formula that helps you solve for other sides and angles of a triangle. Before we do that though, we have to talk about how the triangle is set up. Um, all the angles will be capital letters and they will be on each of the vertexes, vertices. And then across from each angle is its side. So angle A is across from its side, lowercase a. Lowercase b side is across from its angle b, and little c is across from big C. So they all have their match across the triangle from each other. So the main formula in order to uh, solve for law of cosines, it looks like this. So it starts off with a side, whichever one you'd like. I'm just starting with a because it comes first in the alphabet. Then it's your other two sides, so b squared and c squared. And then you minus two times b and c and then cosine of C, or sorry, cosine of A, Sarah. Uh, what's at one end has to match what's on the other end. So if you decide to use angle A, then you have to use little a at the other end of the formula. Those have to match. What's nice about the law of cosines is it's completely interchangeable. So if instead you needed to solve for a, uh, side B, you just make sure that angle B is on the other end, and then we fill it in with the other two sides. So if B is being used, then it's A and C. Same for angle C, you would put little c on one end, angle c on the other, and you would fill the middle with a and b. And that is the law of cosines. It is also interchangeable in order to help you solve for an angle. So we could solve this entire formula, like fence this down and solve for this. So we would start by subtracting these two guys over. And then this actually is a whole quantity that's being timesed. It is being multiplied by this cosine, so it cannot be separated right there. I will have lots of students want to add all of this stuff together, but that's not how the algebra works. I'll show you in our first example. So in order to solve for an angle, it would look like this. So angle A would be this little a minus B and C, because I would need to move these guys over to the other side. Then I would need to divide by all of that. So you would divide by negative two BC. Oh shoot, I didn't leave myself enough room. Hold on. Sorry if you did the same thing. I just have white out. And then in front of it, you're gonna have the cosine inverse because that is how you find an angle is you use an inverse. Um, and then again, this formula is completely interchangeable. So if you wanted to find angle B, then you would put a B there and A and C would fill in your other spaces. If you wanted to find angle C, then little c would go there and a and b would fill in your spaces. So it's nice that the formulas are completely interchangeable. You just kind of have to know the format and then you just plug in whatever you happen to be solving for. So this first one, excuse me, has three different side measures. I know that because they're all lowercase and it would like me to find all three of the angle measures. So I'm just going to start with angle a because a comes first. So I'm going to start with five squared equals eight squared, seven squared. So you start with the one you want and then fill in with the other two. And then minus two times eight times seven with a cosine of, and we were doing five, so that's a, so I gotta be finding cosine of a. So now mathematically, I'm gonna walk you through it real slow on this one, and then we'll speed it up for the others. So five squared is 25, 64, 49. And now all of this, two times eight times seven, is negative 112 cosine of a. What you can't forget is that that is being multiplied right there. So I cannot take my calculator and add together 64, 49, and negative 112. This 112 is connected by multiplication. I can't do that. Um, what I can do is just move these guys over. It would kind of be the same as if I had four plus three X and then said, well, I'm just gonna add this together and make seven. It doesn't work like that because the three and the X are being multiplied. This 112 and this cosine, they're being multiplied, so I can't separate them. But I can take that 64 and 49 over. 
So I'm going to have my 25. I'm going to subtract the 64. I'm going to subtract the 49. And I got negative 88 over on this side. Equals negative 112 cosine of A. Now we're going to divide both sides by negative 112. And I get 0.78. Probably want to carry about four decimal places at this stage if you're not going to just use your second answer button. Oh, geez, you couldn't even see my calculator. Sorry. Um, so at this point, we're going to cosine inverse both sides because that's how you find an angle. So angle A is going to be, and I'm going to cosine that decimal right there. I'm going to hit my second answer button so I don't have to do or don't have to type it in, don't have to round, and then my calculator will be a lot more exact about it. So this is going to be 3.21 and put a degree symbol on it because you just found an angle. So you start with your side. Uh, we're going to subtract, subtract, then divide by all that, and then cosine inverse. So I'll go a little bit faster on the next one. I won't quite show every single step of the work, um, but I'll do B next. So 8 squared, 5 squared, 7 squared, minus 2, 5, and 7, and then cosine of B, because that's what we're going to find. So I'm just going to take my 64. I'm going to subtract 25 and subtract 49. So I got negative 10. And then I got negative 2, 5, and 7, so that'd be negative 70. Cosine of B, I'll divide by negative 70, get a decimal. So this is about 0.1429, and then we're going to cosine inverse it. Um, if you aren't getting the same answers as me, make sure that you're in degree mode. That would be my first check for you. This one ends up being about 81.79 degrees. Now, when you get to the third angle, you have two options. You could just do 180 minus these two angles, and that should find you the third. Um, back in geometry, we taught you that all the angles in a triangle add up to 180. Whether or not this is oblique or a right triangle, doesn't matter, still add up to 180. So I could totally do that. I could come up with my C answer. What is unfortunate about that is if you messed up either one of these, then you're going to end up messing up your third one. So even though it might seem like a little bit more work, I would definitely set up for the third one and use that 180 idea in order to check your three answers, not to find it, if you can help it. So I'm just going to set up for 7 squared, and then I've got 5 and 8, minus 2 times 5 and 8, and then a cosine of C. So I'm going to take 49, minus 25, minus 64. I'm going to divide by the 2 and the 5 and the 8. Oh my word, you can't see it again. So there was me doing 49 minus the 25 minus the 64. Then I'm just going to divide by, I hit a parenthesis, and I'm just doing the negative 2, the 5, and the 8, just all together as one package. And now I'm going to cosine inverse that. So it looks like angle C is 60 degrees. So now let's just do our 180 check. So I had 60 degrees, I had 81.79, and I had 38.21. Smack on the nose, got 180. So it looks like I did all three of those correct. Another check you can do if you're not entirely sure if you're getting one of them right or wrong is look for your largest side, 8. That means B has got to be my largest angle. So out of the three, it's the largest. And it also works for the smallest. So that would have been A. A should be the smallest, and it is. So it's just another check that you can use to make sure you've got them all lined up. Next up, they gave me an angle measure. So I'm going to just draw you a picture of this real quick. So angle C will say is right there, 111 degrees. Uh, B and A, doesn't matter where they go. 27 is here and 18 is here. This is still a law of cosines question, even though you do have an angle, um, because you have an angle, but you have the two sides that kind of sandwich it. So that is still a law of cosines idea. Um, so I'm going to set up for law of cosines. We'll have little C out here. We'll have 18 and 27. Minus 2 with the 18 and 27, and then cosine of 111. This, oh, I did it again. It's not 110, it's 111. And this is kind of different because if you really look at this entire problem, the only place we have a variable is right there. So all of this can just be entered into your calculator just how it is. So 18 squared plus 27 squared minus 2 times 18 times 27 cosine 111. Make sure that it all goes together. Make sure you don't accidentally hit enter without this. That's got to be multiplied by all that stuff. So I got 1401. What lots of students do forget is that this is equal to c squared. So I actually need to square root this to find my 
length of C, which is about 37.43. And that's a length of a side. That's not an angle measure. Um, makes total sense because this is going to be our biggest angle in this triangle, and that was our biggest side. So that for sure works out so far. Now we just have two more measures to find. That's angle B and angle A. So I'm going to set it for angle B. So that means my 18 squared will be out there. Uh, I got 27 squared, and I got to use my C, which is now 37, 4, 3. And this is cosine of, what did I say I was finding? B. There we go. So 18 and B. 18 has to be across from B, so that's what I'm solving for. This one's going to be more like above. I'm going to take my 18 squared. I'm going to subtract the 27 squared, and I'm going to subtract that 37. Oh, that needs a squared. 0.43 squared. We're going to subtract those guys. Then we're going to divide by negative 2, 27, and 37.43. When I cosine inverse that, I found out that my angle B is about 26.66 degrees. Last one we got to find is angle A, so I'm going to set up for that. I got a 27 squared. 18 squared and my 37.43 squared with a cosine of A. So again, just like above, we're going to subtract the first two, divide by the second chunk. So 27 squared minus 18 squared minus 37.43 squared. Then we're going to divide by the 2, the 18, and the 37.43. And this time when I cosine inverse, I, oops. When I cosine inverse, I get about 42.34 degrees. Just going to double check my 180. So my triangle should add up to 180. I started with 111. I got a 26.6, and I got a 42.34, and I'm right on 180. So did that one right as well. That is the law of cosines. Works really well when you get lots of sides to solve for. Um, or if I have a side and a missing, or vice versa, missing angle or a matching side, if I get one of those pairs, it's a good law of cosines question.